Welcome to week four. Um, this week we're going to continue and finish up perspective drawing. Uh, we, we will uh, be uh, continuing where we left off last week. Um, what we're going to cover this week is um, informal perspective. Last week we learned about um, formal perspective. In other words, we covered things like the horizon line, vanishing points, uh, converging lines, um, and things of that nature. Um, that all has to do with formal perspective. And uh, formal, formal perspective uh, was kind of uh, developed during the Renaissance time, so it's been around for uh, at least 200 years. Um, this, uh, this, this time, what we're gonna learn about is informal perspective. And informal perspective is something that uh, Betty Edwards utilizes to kind of uh, help uh, as kind of a shorthand in drawing and perspective. So we're going to learn uh, learn both methods, and uh, let, let's uh, let's learn about that now. Okay, so last week uh, we mentioned that in Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, she talks about um, the uh, establishing relationships in, in drawing, and what exactly are those relationships. So. Um, Betty Edwards uh, says that um, we're going to look at, in perspective, or related to perspective, we're going to look at the relationships of angles and proportions. Okay, so what we have uh, that we're going to use as a tool this week is a device called a picture plane. And I talked about the picture plane uh, earlier in the class. And the picture plane is, uh, is something that, again, the Renaissance artists would, would construct or build. Uh, kind of like a, a glass window or a glass device that they could put in front of a, a, a scene, a mountain, or a, or, or a person, or a subject, uh, and utilize that picture plane to be able to capture what they're going to draw. And Betty Edwards, she put together a, uh, a, a version of that, and she calls it a viewfinder. And she uses this viewfinder to help in the aid of uh, drawing an informal perspective, or another word for informal perspective, uh, it, it's called sighting. Um, so you will be using this picture plane or viewfinder to draw the corner of a room. And that's the, uh, the main uh, lesson or the main assignment that we have for this week. Incidentally, if uh, you are an online student, um, I will have uh, the actual picture plane, uh, this uh, constructed uh, device. It's uh, kind of made of cardboard and, and, uh, and uh, some clear plastic. I'll have this available uh, at the front office. So during the week, um, starting on Tuesday, all you have to do is that uh, you uh, would be so kind as to stop by um, the ALA campus in the front office and I've instructed uh, the, the folks there to, to save some for you. So you just have to come to the front office and let them know that you're uh, in Art One and um, that uh, Mr. Mossman has left a, a, a viewfinder or picture plane for you there, and you can come and pick one up and utilize it and take it home. Please, please uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, you can either email me or call me or, or uh, let me know through Google Classroom. Okay, so you'll notice that this picture plane, uh, what it has is a, a black frame around it, and it has uh, what Betty Edwards calls uh, crosshairs. Uh, there's a straight line vertically and a straight line horizontally directly in the middle of, of that plastic picture plane that you can see through. And we'll talk about why those are there. So what you will do is use this picture plane to uh, put up or hold up in front of your subject or in front of the view that you're going to draw. And um, uh, Betty Edwards has a specific way that she wants us to do this. Um, so what we're, well, the reason that we're doing this is so that we can find a basic unit of measurement. Um, so the trick here is to uh, take that, uh, or, uh, that uh, picture, picture plane and hold it up um, with your arm and close one eye as you hold that, that picture plane up in front of the, the subject that you're going to draw. And what you're going to do is lock your arm or lock your elbow so that it's completely straight and, and, and consistent while you're holding that up. So this way you'll know if you're going to put the picture plane down and then bring it back up again, you're going to keep that elbow locked so you have it in the same fixed position. 
it's the same distance uh, from the subject. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to use your uh, number two pencil to mark a, a corner of a room. Okay, that's the subject uh, that we're going to, or lesson that we're going to work on, uh, or assignment that we're going to work on this week, is to draw the corner of a room, specifically a doorway uh, of a room. Okay, so um, you, you look at that uh, view through the viewfinder, okay, and, and see what, uh, what you have. And what you're going to want to want to figure out is again this basic unit of measurement. So you can put the picture plane down and grab yourself a pencil, number two pencil, and just as it shows in Figure 20-1, you're going to take your pencil and with your thumb you're going to mark the top of the doorway of the corner of the room, or it could be a window. And with your thumb you're going to mark the width of the top of that doorway. Next, what you'll want to do is to hold that uh, your thumb uh, on the pencil there and hold that position and then turn the pencil vertically and measure the side of the doorway. And what we'll do is count down how many of that first basic unit of measurement you have on, on the vertical side um, from the horizontal side. So just in like figure 20-2, you're holding that uh, measure and then you're turning your pencil to vertical and measure counting one, two, and in this example we have two and two thirds, okay? So there's two and two thirds of the horizontal basic unit of measurement uh, on the vertical side of the door, okay? So in essence what we have is a, a ratio. The example shown is a ratio of one unit uh, of measurement to two and two thirds vertically of the doorway. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, another thing to note is that when we are uh, citing something, we're not only looking at the, uh, the basic unit of measurement, but we're also looking at the angles of something. So this is where the um, informal perspective comes into play. So we'll notice that in figure 20-8, uh, we can see uh, uh, the hands, two hands holding up a pencil, and, and that's a demonstration of holding up your pencil perfectly horizontally. And what you're going to do is compare that horizontal uh, measurement or line, uh, line of, not the measurement, but the line of the pencil, compare that to the angle of the top of the door or the ceiling. And notice that in figure 20-8, the ceiling is actually at an angle going down, or the lines are converging down. So that's what you want to capture, in again, in your uh, picture plane. So notice uh, in figure 20-5, uh, you see that basic unit of measurement, okay, and, and, and a marking there. So you can draw on your actual picture plane with a erasable marker, that basic unit of measurement, or the top of that, that doorway, that line, and then compare those lines, or, or that horizontal line, and mark down, uh, going down maybe two and two thirds down, to find the, the height of the door vertically. And you'll make several of these marks, you don't have to make too many, but you'll make several of these marks, especially if your basic unit of measurement exactly um, onto that, or directly, excuse me, directly onto that picture plane with a erasable marker, okay? So again, you're finding the angles on the top of the door and the ceiling relative to horizontal, and then you want to note that also all vertical lines stay vertical, and all lines above your horizon line converge down, and all lines below the horizon line will converge up. But you're mainly just going piece by piece, and um, just as in that example in the bottom of this uh, illustration you'll see the, the picture plane with the crosshairs and the, and the view of something behind it. You're comparing the horizontal and the vertical lines okay, um, with the lines of, of the image in your viewfinder and that's how you'll copy or you'll trans transfer what you see uh, in the picture plane to your piece of paper and I'll talk about that next. So the main things want to do with this picture plane is with an erasable marker 
draw several lines indicating um, kind of a map or schematic of what you're going to draw. It doesn't have to be too much. It can it can mainly be um, your like in Figure 20-5, your your basic unit of measurement. Okay, that's a basic unit. For example, maybe the top of the door and horizontal horizontally how much that takes up of, of your pencil. Okay, so now again let's go on and what we're going to do is have those markings transferred from our viewfinder to a piece of paper. Okay, so um, on an 11 or 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and with the ruler I want you to draw a square frame. Okay, and this square frame um, should be six inches wide and eight inches tall. Okay, and then the next thing, what you'll want to do is with the ruler again, draw a line directly in the middle, vertically, and another line in the middle horizontally uh, on that on that uh, on that frame. Okay, you'll notice that this frame has what's called crosshairs, uh, just like your viewfinder. Okay, so that's where your viewfinder, you can take that unit of measurement and transfer it onto this piece of paper, which have which has the same ratio of one to one, or you know, it's the, should be relatively the same size as your as your viewfinder, uh, the, uh, the frame of your eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. Okay, so you're mainly going to transfer your basic unit and other markings onto this viewfinder or onto this paper. Okay, and then after that. What you'll do is um, you'll just simply look at through your viewfinder and look at the, the different angles and the different um, lines and, and, and places um, using your basic unit of measurement um, to continue drawing the rest of the corner of the room and, and finish uh, completing the drawing, just as you see here in the bottom of uh, the illustrations here. You'll continue um, from that, that jumping off point of the basic unit of measurement to, uh, to notice what angles you have relative to your vertical lines and your horizontal lines and continue to, to finish and complete the drawing of the corner of the room.